Do you understand that when you are in the Lord, He gives you the right to tell other people about Him. He gives you the right to make it personal to yourself that the good news would be told about Him in all of our mouths. It's not just my job to tell people about Him. Not even just, not even you guys. Like you guys should be telling each other about Him too. And so when Paul talks about rightly dividing the word of truth, we have to be digging into the scriptures. We have to be knowing who God is. We have to be studying Him diligently. I know so often I, I hear this all the time. People are like, I just don't understand the word of God. Well, how much are you reading it? Because if you pick out one Bible verse to read, and that's your verse for the week, of course you're not going to understand it. It'll take you many, many lifetimes to get hardly anything out of it. And people are like, oh, man, I read my Bible verse this week, and I just, I just still don't understand what God's all about. I'm like, well, if you're reading one Bible verse a week, you're not diligently seeking God. You're not desiring to know him more. What are you even doing it for? Look, the scriptures are about the Lord. Let me tell you from experience. Let me give you a little testimony here. The Lord is the best thing that could ever happen in your life. Hands down. There's no, no amens for that? Nobody knows? Nobody else can testify as just me? The Lord is the, the best thing that will ever happen in your life. There is no, nothing greater. There's nothing out in the world that will ever measure up to it. But you don't know that until you step into it. You can't stand on the outside and look at the game going on over there and go, man, I'd really like to play in that game, but you know, I'm just out here watching it. No, the Lord is calling you to step in. He said, hey, here we go. Get out there. Go do it. I know you're not going to do it perfect every time. That's okay. Go do it anyway. I will, I will empower you to do what I want to do in you. That's what the Lord is calling. For you to step in, not for you to be perfect. Is there anybody in here that's perfect? One in the back, of course. It's always the people in the back. It really is. Nobody ever up front wants to wait, raise their hand. Oh, yeah. Yeah, amen. Okay. We all are perfectly imperfect. But in your imperfection, God in your weakness, he is made strong, right? That's what he says. In your imperfection, God does amazing things. It's not in your perfection. If you were perfect, who would God be? But because you're imperfect, God can do amazing things with your life. If there was anybody in the scriptures, even the in the hall of faith in Romans, look at any of those people. Are any of them perfect? No. A lot of them had sins in their life that were crazy bad. And you're looking at them like, man, I'm surprised you even wrote their name in here, God. Like, you don't want to point people to them. Like, but it just shows us God can use anyone. God doesn't want perfect people. He just wants people who are willing to serve him. And often that's imperfect people, isn't it? Look, if you're going to rightly divide his word, you have to know his word. You have to be in his word. You have to be steeped in it. You can't make that on the back burner. You know you forget about things that are on the back burner. Like when you're cooking, anybody cook in here? When you're cooking and you have things in the front row, I, I don't cook that much, but I'm just, you know, and that's probably why this happens to me. But when you're cooking, you got things in the front row and you got like rice in the back or something like that. It's often you forget about the thing in the back and you burn it, right? Because you're focused on the thing right here in front of your face. If you don't put God and His Word right here in front of your face, you're going to forget about it and burn it. It needs to be right here. It needs to be your main focus. Put the things of the world on the back burner. You don't need those anyway. You can burn it all day long. Put the things of the, the Lord right here in front of your face. That's how you get steeped in His Word. That Bible, don't even leave it closed. I don't care if it's on your nightstand or in your family room or whatever, but it better not be closed. Leave that thing open. If it's open, you'll read it. If it's closed, it'll just collect dust. If you, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, thank you. That's how I learned to play guitar. I left the guitar case open. Pull the guitar out. 
It's easier to play when it's out of the case, you know? See what I'm saying? You can't have things closed off to you and expect it to just happen by osmosis, that it's just going to, oh, it's closed, but it'll just come out and surround me. No, it has to be open so you can read it. It has to be open. That's the only way you can know his word.